Check this shit out. As a kid, I shared my Nintendo with my sister. While there were a few games for the system that we both played, there were others that were distinctly hers. She was five years older than me and way hipper than young James, so while I was adolescent boying my way through no-brainers like Bad Dudes or Iron Sword, Libby employed a more discerning palette and chose a couple of interesting picks. The first was Solstice, a fantasy exploration game chock full of grotesque enemies, chilling locations, and soul-scraping death screams. And the second was Faxanadu, a fantasy exploration game chock full of grotesque enemies, chilling locations, and... wait a minute. So she had a type, apparently, and in retrospect, incredibly good taste. I've discussed Solstice already in a separate review, and it's amazing. But I must say I'm especially excited to finally dedicate some time to one of my favorite games ever made, Faxanadu. Faxanadu was developed by Hudson Soft and published by Nintendo. It's actually part of a much larger series known as Dragon Slayer, which were a bunch of RPG-esque titles that mostly appeared on Japanese home computers. One of the more recent Faxanadu I've learned about this game is its pronunciation. Having grown up in the pre-internet age, I knew this guy as Ryu, this guy as Ninja Gaiden, and this game as Faxanadu. And I know for a fact that there were many, many others out there just like me. However, in recent times, I've been corrected about all three of those pronunciations, including this game, which I've now heard pronounced Fuzanadu and Fuzanadu. Faxandu is a spin-off of Dragon Slayer 2, Xanadu, and its name combines that subtitle with the alias for the Nintendo in Japan, the family computer. In American English, I'd assumed then that this was Fuzanadu, but then I remembered that there was an episode of Captain N, the Game Master, that took place in this game's world, and surely they spoke its name out loud. Let's check in and see what Elf King Elvis here says about it. Never have any peace until we drive them off Faxanadu once and for all. All right then, Captain N has spoken. Case closed. Let us never speak of it again. Anyway, Faxanadu is an action platformer in the vein of Zelda II The Adventure of Link, although with less leveling up and more inventory upgrading. The biggest comparison between the two is the combat, which does look and feel very much like Zelda II's iconic jump slashinating. Unlike that game, Faxandu follows a much more linear path where you guide your unnamed hero up the world tree, starting at the trunk and working your way up to the branches. Along the way, you'll need to defeat certain enemies or acquire certain items, at which point there's usually someone waiting to be bequeathed upon in exchange for a key or ring that then opens up the next area. Between the fighting sections are a series of towns where you can heal up, purchase stuff, talk to villagers, and just generally take a breather. The townspeople are a little more useful than those in Zelda 2, and help fill in a lot of the story with little tidbits about dwarves and meteorites and whatnot. I mostly find myself avoiding them for no reason at all, just comically leaping over their heads even though they can't block your path in any way. Look at me go! They have some really nice designs to their characters that come in two forms. The walking around look, like this cool cat posted up ripping cigs, and the close up look found mostly in the stores. Certain characters will give you a portrait to gaze upon when you chat them up, and man, these are some really well rendered faces. So unique looking and expressive. I feel like you could stare at any of these dudes and completely write their backstories in your head. Also pretty sure that all of them are on that elvish crystal, and that's why they can't stop blinking like crazy people. The main dudes you'll need to check in on in every town are the tool guys who carry all the equipable stuff like weapons, magic, armor, shields, as well as the single use items like red potions and elixirs that heal you or the matic and winged boots which let you get past certain barriers later on. There's also the guru who is the restart point after you die and who will provide you with the world's most cumbersome password if you're calling it a day. As a kid, I always messed these up when I wrote them down, but nowadays, thankfully, my phone can do all the heavy lifting. The gurus can also bestow ranks on you based on how many enemies you destroy. As you lose both experience and gold when you die, gaining ranks will then allow you to restart with a set amount of both, so you don't have to grind your way back to rich man status with every game over. You start at novice and can make it to lord if you're really, really diligent. 
That's cool and all, but that title just doesn't sound as rad to me as Myrmidon or Chevalier. So I think I'm gonna stay down the lower ranks of society, thank you very much. I do, of course, have a lot of nostalgia built up for Faxandu. I distinctly remember a neighbor telling us that if you talk to the king at the beginning, spend all his money, and then die, you can go back to him and get more cash on top of the items you've already purchased. Sucker. Or this part near the beginning where you can buy the best shield and magic super early, but they are insanely expensive, requiring hours of real life grinding to buy. My sister actually got both of these back in the day, and I don't think ever played the game again after that. The process had been so cumbersome, it turned her off to Faxanadu altogether. Mostly, I really remember this section with the fog. As a kid, I probably played up to this part 20 times, but I found the mist to be so difficult, and honestly a little too creepy for my young mind, that I'd often just restart the game instead of hunkering down and powering through it. The most distinct thing about Faxanadu that sticks out to me is the atmosphere. This game is creepy. Most of that is conveyed by these grotesque, almost Geiger-esque enemies that populate the world. Like the classic chicken eyeball, this faceless babushka, and this, um, Garabuta? No shit. And check out some of these mini-bosses. Cool. Whoa. The dragon guy is probably the least warped of them all, but honestly as a kid I was way more frightened of him than old alien sperm over here. Something about the way he moves combined with the chilling entrance music always made me run away immediately. The backgrounds and foregrounds also paint a bleak setting. Faxandu embraces an aesthetic of decay and deformity, where what were probably once normal locations or majestic castles are now so bleak and rotten and twisted. Just compare the towers of Faxandu with the dungeons of Zelda 2. I used to really find these levels so spooky until I later played Faxandu and took it all back. And then there's the music. Good lord. I will often throw out how a certain soundtrack is my favorite, and on the NES there are a great many. It's hard to compete with the complexity of Castlevania 3, the catchiness of Mega Man 2, or the weekend in 90s Berlin of Rekka Summer Carnival, but if I had to pick a game whose soundtrack best complemented its scenery, it'd have to be Faxanadu. Not only are these compositions super catchy and memorable, but they perfectly encapsulate the essence of a place. Everything from the somber house of worship with the guru, to the bustling commerce of the towns, the call to adventure of the outdoor areas, the threat of unholy danger in the towers, and damn if this mist music doesn't make you feel some sort of creeping dread, I don't know what will. So that's all the good stuff about Faxandu. Surely there's nothing negative to say about it, right? Well... To start with, the controls are a mixed bag. The hitboxes and hurtboxes around your character or the bad guys, that is the space surrounding the sprites that tells the game if something took damage or not, isn't as perfect as its Zelda contemporary, and there will be many, many times where you'll feel like they unfairly got a cheap shot in on you. And certain enemies exploit this to no end, just giving you zero room to avoid their attacks and forcing you to be absolutely clinical in your own, or else it's back to the mantra. Speaking of which, check out this part where when you climb a ladder, this dude immediately stabs you and knocks you back to the next level. God. And there's no other way to get around this dude. Turns out there is a strategy, which is if you ever so gently nudge your way up the ladder, your character will eventually stand still and allow you to repeatedly rail on this rung blocker. This is far beyond the Medusa head, flying bird level of obnoxiously placed enemy, and belongs in its own category of practically impossible jackholes. Worse than the combat though is the platforming. You can't run in this game, but your walk speed does pick up momentum as you move. This means that most jumps can't be made from a standstill. That wouldn't be a huge issue, except when there's multiple leaps in a row, which then gives you no time to plan your jump timing. Even worse than that, there's often platforming between screens, meaning you'll need to plan out how to perfectly press your buttons with the scrolling brakes shoved in the middle. And all that wouldn't be that hard except that the platforms are perfectly placed at a distance where you need to jump from the absolute edge at full speed to make them. I've played Faxandu a hundred times and I still struggle with this, even in the easiest sections of the game. While the townspeople you interact with are helpful in their guidance of where to go and how to find certain items, there are still some obtuse moments. 
Like in the section where you open the three fountains, you'll talk to this guy who will open the final well. Afterwards, you'll go to the main water source that leads to where you need to go next, and what do I do now? Well, it turns out you're supposed to talk to him twice, and on the second chat, he'll give you the ruby ring, which lets you move the block here and drop down the ladder. But if you're like me, you rushed right out of here after the first combo, so you could beat the dragon before the ointment wore off, and now you have to trek back to town, buy another jack key, go back to the tower, wind your way back to the guru, who will give you another joker key, then go back to the old man to get the ring and finally move on. That's silly. Speaking of keys, man, you'll need a lot of them, and unfortunately, you really won't know how many of which type are required until you get to a locked door, at which point you'll probably need to backtrack a ways to buy more. Why do you need so many? Why, they're single-use keys, of course. For the most part, you're never that far away from a town to purchase more. That is until this section right here. After you get the black onyx at the end of the mist level, you show it to this guy, who then gives you the ace key, which then opens the door to the final part of the game. Okay, great. So you go inside, walk around, and eventually you'll find a door with a king key lock. Okay, well, I didn't bring one, so let's keep going. You'll then take a different path until you find another door with, you guessed it, a king key lock. Hmm. Let's try one more path, which takes us to this town that doesn't have a key salesman. What the fuck? Yeah, so now you have to travel back to the door that goes to the mist, back through that obscured labyrinth, get back to the last town where that guy sells king keys, make your way all the way back to the black onyx guy to get another ace key, and only then can we now open these doors. And guess what? If you die while trying to get the very important items kept in these areas, you will wake up fresh out of keys, and then have to do this whole stupid misretrieval business all over again. It's just a cruel, purposeful speed bump placed by the developers, whose only purpose is to drag out the length of this part of the game. Fuck off. So, what does all that add up to? How did those criticisms measure up to the positive aspects of the game? Well, I'd absolutely say that Faxandu is an excellent title for all the reasons I mentioned. And although there are many frustrating and confusing aspects to its design, I do believe they're outweighed by the overwhelming awesomeness of its presentation. I wouldn't put it up there in the same ranking with the almighty and often referenced in this video, Zelda 2, but it's ultimately a very different gameplay experience to Z2, and one that absolutely deserves to be played today. Huge, huge shout out to my newest Patreon homie, Acid Flux, for whom I've made this Mega Man inspired sign. It initially said Acid Burn until I realized my mistake and fixed it, but I left my hacker's reference in there anyway. Thanks so much, man. If you want to hack the planet like that cool cat, jump on over to patreon.com slash biggowords and consider joining the revolution. At some point I'll make a whole video on Zelda 2 inspired games including my beloved Faxandu, but in the meantime if you haven't seen it, I have made a video like that for the original Legend of Zelda, so somewhere on the screen there should be a link to part 1 and part 2 of my Zelda clone series. Until next time, thanks for watching.